Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. Reward is our subject this week. You've said on the programme so far that salvation is God's gift to us. But on the day of judgment, each person will be rewarded according to what we have done. And on yesterday's programme, Colin, you were showing us how honour and reward are very closely linked. Yes, actually, it was Jesus who said that, not me, (laughs) that each will be rewarded according to what he's done. So these words have divine authority. And we saw a little bit yesterday of how this is outworked in the ministry of Jesus, that where people honored him, they, they got what they needed from him. When there was no honor, there was no reward. And so we saw the relationship uh, between honor and faith. And on Monday, we saw the relationship between faith and obedience. It's very interesting because honor is something that in our Western culture we don't take an awful lot of notice of, maybe. Do you think this is therefore reflected in our attitude within the church and therefore could be affecting our relationship? We, we have a real problem with this in, mm-hmm. in the Western church. I, I think everybody is well aware of how in many African countries uh, the miraculous seems very much more in evidence and the healings that take place and the wonderful healings. And people say, oh, well, that's Africa. And actually it's got nothing to do with it being Africa. There are some very good reasons. People could say, well, the level of faith in Africa is different from the level in Western Europe, the level of faith in Western Europe. And that is certainly very true. So that is part of the answer. But to anybody who goes to Africa to preach will know how much they honor the one whom God sends to be among them. In fact, so much so, it's very difficult for us with our Western mentality to receive the honor that they want to give you. Um, You know, you will be meted, you you will be met and greeted. Um, When you arrive somewhere, there'll be a deputation. You won't be allowed to carry your own bag or your own Bible even. You'll be escorted. Anything you want, anything we can do to serve you. People are dancing attendance on you all the time. And, you know, we're just not used to that kind of thing. Uh, You know, even even in, in these poorer countries, they will put you up in the best possible hotel uh, because they want to honor you. And they recognize that in honoring you, they're honoring the Lord. And the first time I was subjected to all this, I, I found it exceedingly difficult because the people where I was ministering to were very poor. And I wanted to say to them, no, 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 you don't need to do all this. And as clearly as anything, the Holy Spirit said to me, you are not to say anything. You are to receive the honor that they give you. And it was some time later that I understood why the Lord said that, because honor brings reward. And you see, the people among whom Jesus was was ministering were very poor by comparison to him. But whenever they showed him honor, then they got their reward because honor and faith went together. And I began to realize that these great things happen in Africa. Yes, because of the level of faith being different from the level of faith in most churches in Western society, but also because they show honor to those whom God sends them with the anointing. It's not so much honoring the person. They do honor the person, but they honor the person because they're carrying the anointing of God. They understand the spiritual dynamic of it. Yes, and Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. So in honoring him, they are honoring the anointing that God had sent into the world. So you see, it's the same principle. It's not so much honoring the person, but honoring the fact that God has sent this person to preach. God has sent this person with whatever ministry gifts they have. God has sent this person with the anointing that's on their lives. So you see that where there is that honor, then there will be a reward. There will be an outcome. And 
It's so the reward is not just what is going to happen after the day of judgment, what is going to happen eternally, but honoring God, honoring the anointing, uh, brings reward now. And the the reason for that is, you see, people, if they show honor, they also have a great expectation that through the ministry of that person, they're going to receive something not from the person, but from God. So it is a God-centered thing. It's not a man-centered thing. And it's very difficult to actually talk about this when you're in leadership yourself. And it's very difficult to get people to understand this with our Western mentality. Because, you see, we've been ruined by a kind of democratic mindset which suggests that everybody is equal in the sight of God. Well, you will not find that in the Bible that God regards different groups of people in totally different ways. Uh, He has a particular love for the obedient, for example. He says that uh, you will continue to live in my love if you obey my commands, just as I continue to live in the Father's love because I obeyed his commands. You see, that brings us back to what we were talking about on Monday when we said obedience brings reward. Obedience to the will of God enables you to continue to live in the love of God, at one with him in his love. Now, the clear implication of what Jesus is saying is if you do not obey him, you do not continue in that love. It doesn't mean that God stops loving you because God is love. He loves all the time. But His love can only impact a person's life in the way that he desires when they're living in his love. You see, the unsaved people are not living in his love. Yes, there is a love that he has for the lost in sending his son to die for them. But what he wants us as the church to do is to go into all the world, to take that love, to draw people into his love. And so Jesus clearly teaches that people are outside that love. They are actually in condemnation until they come to faith in him. When they come to faith in him, they're born again. And when they're born again, they are actually drawn into the love of God. Now they can live in the love of God and the Holy Spirit comes upon them and the love of God lives in them. So Jesus' command to the disciples is, well, you continue to obey my commands, and that process of living in my love and having my love living in you will continue. So, you see, there is another reward for obedience, that we continue to be at one with the Lord in his love. And this, according to Jesus, has all kinds of other ramifications. Because coupled with that obedience goes the faith and the honor. And when we honor him and believe in him and believe his word, then he says, you will receive whatever you ask in prayer if you believe. All these things are bound up together. What about the verse that says, while we're talking about honor, honor your father and mother. Are we to see that in a similar light? Yes, because... um, We were talking a few weeks ago about having to honor those in secular authority. Now, they don't have the spiritual authority that is given to people who belong to the kingdom of God. But nevertheless, we are to respect anyone whom God has placed in authority because without that authority, there would be anarchy. And God's kingdom cannot really be expressed in the midst of anarchy. So uh, there is God's order, but you see, it's, it's honoring God in the order that he has set up. So we're to honor the marriage bed. We're to honor the covenant of marriage, which is why God doesn't want any sexual activity outside of marriage. Uh, and he certainly doesn't want any adultery that is going to lead to the breakdown of marriage. And therefore, uh, husbands and wives are to honor one another. The wife is to honor the husband by being submissive to him. And the husband is to honor the wife by loving her in the same way that Christ loves the church. Children are to honor their parents. Honor your father and mother. But also Paul says that the children are to honor their parents. 
And the parents are not to exasperate their children, <laughs> as my children used to remind me when they were young, <laughs> um, because this is the word of the Lord. So you see, built into the whole teaching of Jesus is this business of honor, because where there is that honor, there will be reward. Where there is faith, there will be reward. Where there is obedience, there will be reward. Now, what all this does accumulatively is to enable us to bear much fruit for the glory or for the honor of the Father. And if we bear much fruit, then we will receive the reward for that. And several of the parables that Jesus taught really are parables about reward, and we're going to look at some of those tomorrow. But what we have to understand is that this business of reward is there right the way through. It's like a thread through the teaching of Jesus. But I'll say it again today, as I've said on previous days, this has got nothing to do with salvation. Salvation is God's gift. We can't earn salvation. It's not a reward for what we have done. Salvation is a gift according to what Jesus has done. But what happens to us now within the life of the kingdom that we live here on earth is determined by what we have done. And our eternal reward in heaven, Jesus himself makes very clear, will be determined on the day of judgment by what we have done with our lives here on earth. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 